I think for an HR professional, you have to ask the question, in my own scope of influence and control, what is the workflow that I can actually automate that's going to make my job easier, that's going to allow me to focus on something else? So for me, automation and the real value and benefit lies a lot more in the incremental changes that you need to make over time, as opposed to that big silver bullet changes that we sometimes expect from large-scale technology operations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HR Hot Topics. My name is Eric van Vulpen. With me is Dieter Veldman. And today we're going to talk about automation. But before we start talking about this, Dieter, let's specify what automation is. Because I think there's quite some confusion about automation and these days also with artificial intelligence. And there's a clear distinction between automation and, and AI, for example. Automation is really a input and output thing. You know, if one, then the other. If I hire an employee, then I need to get an office card so they can access the office. I need to reserve a parking place and I need to order them a laptop and make their email account. That is what automation is about. A very clear input and a very clear output. Artificial intelligence, there's a lot of talk about open AI and chat GPT and, and those uh, generative intelligences. Artificial intelligence is much fuzzier. There's a less clear correlation between the input and what the outcome will be. Automation, very straightforward with AI not so straightforward. Dieter, what is an application of automation that you're very excited about in HR? I think there's two for me, Eric, and the first one is maybe a non-conventional or untraditional one. And I think that is to look at the possibilities that automation provides pertaining to employee experience. Um, I spoke to an organization the other day and they are already implementing some automations in their employee listening strategy so that at key memorable moments along the employee life cycle, automatically feedback is gathered and then pushed back towards the HR business partner to make insightful um, recommendations pertaining to what the next step for the employee journey needs to be. I think on the other side, it is about how do we release the HR practitioner from self-service tasks. So I think in that self-service domain and that experience, very excited to see what that will bring in future. Um, I have around five different categories of automations that I think are interesting to talk about and interesting to apply for yourself to see how can I apply these different elements in the employee lifecycle to my organization. The first one is recruitment and onboarding. I think in the recruitment space, there's a lot of automation already being used. I'm thinking of chatbots where, you know, you talk to a chatbot and you give it the information and it's essentially the same as filling in a form, but it's much more interactive. I'm thinking about job posting as well. You know, you may post your job on your website and then automatically it is also posted on your job board, on LinkedIn, on different other platforms. I think there's also a lot of automation being used in applicant tracking systems when it comes to screening, you know, highlighting keywords. Does the CV I get into my system match on these keywords? And that again is automation, it's a rule-based system. And then the onboarding example that I already gave, you know, an employee comes into the door, so we need a new laptop, we need an access card, we need a parking place, and there's a lot of other things that we need to do in order to get that employee up and running. So that recruitment and selection space, I think is the, is the first big application when it comes to automation in HR. The second category where I think there's a lot of opportunity for automation is when it comes to self-service and admin. And you already spoke about that, Dieter. It's, I think, on the one hand, updating personal details, you know, personal details are missing. Traditionally, that's an HR administrator who then you know, looks at that, sends a person an email, and then manually types it in. With automation, you can have the system send an automated email, retrieve the data from that email, and then automatically put it into the system, and there's no HR administrator that needs to work on that. I think there's also time and attendance data. Do you take holidays? You can sync that with your agenda and immediately put that into your HR information system. And there's also payroll and, and benefits applications, where from very simple applications, like does the name still match the account number of the person? Is this number in range with the usual salary that we pay to people? You know, we probably all know that, that anecdote of a an, uh, payroll employee who puts in two extra numbers and, you know, the company on paper goes bankrupt. That is happening more often than we want to uh, uh, admit. So there, again, automation plays another key role. And then finally, offboarding as well. Just like with onboarding, with offboarding, we can also automate a lot of the actions that we should take. Eric, I think on that note, there's a very interesting case study to really showcase how this has been applied in practice. And I think the two examples that you utilized, firstly, of the um, ATS systems and then saving time, as well as on the other side, the self-service workflow automations that we see in a number of organizations. And the first example comes from Microsoft, where they've implemented something called MyHub, which is their self-service portal for employees, where a lot of queries can be automated, 
Um, a lot of those touch points with the employee also brings a sense of consistency. You know, we all know that example around the employees off board and oh, we forgot to follow the following steps. And, you know, that leaves a very bad taste in the mouth of the employee. The other example that we also find is from General Electric that looked at a lot of their workflows in terms of automating things like promotions or automating things that happen within the position management process. And anyone that's worked in work architecture and organizational design will remember what a nightmare that is to make sure that all those different touch points actually has been updated if there's a change in some of your master data or in some of your core architecture that you do need to change. So for me, I think really some good practical application and really the benefit that companies are seeing here is not only efficiency, but I think it's also consistency on the one side and then on the other side, the opportunity for HR to reach more people more of the time and expand the service offering. So let's dive into the next category of applications of automation in HR. And it's really in the learning and performance management space, where I think, especially when it comes to performance management and goal setting and integrate that potentially with your project management tools, there's a lot of opportunity for automation. You know, if someone completes all the tasks that they set out to do in their CRM system or in their uh, workflow system, that means that they probably perform better than someone who didn't do all their tasks. So there are certain opportunities for automation and for cascading different goals and doing that in an automated way. I also think of e-learning platforms. Mm. You know, we try to get our employees to learn and to study more. You have learning streaks that you also have in Duolingo, for example. If someone goes into the learning system every single day, maybe after a week we should send them an automated email and after a month, you know, their manager should really tell them something because they're doing a good job. And I think we're also seeing it in the engagement survey space, especially with pulse surveys where essentially an algorithm is scanning, you know, which part of the organization should we now um, send a pulse in order to get a good overview of the entire organization. Again, a great example of how automation can be leveraged in HR. I want to use two examples there, Eric. I think on the one side, Google, that's utilized a lot of their automation in terms of their workflow pertaining to their performance management system or their OKRs as they utilize in their uh, methodology. And I think also from my own personal experience, a bit of an example about how automation can actually help you combine practices. So to bridge the gap between something like performance management on the one side, making sure those goals pull through to something like an individual development plan to bring it back to an individual level for an individual to look at and say, this is where I'm going to develop in line with what my goals are and keeping those two things in sync um, really as part of that. So I think some great examples there to think about, not only about automation at an organizational level, but I actually believe that there's a lot of good application at the individual employee level as well, if you think about it in that way. So the fourth big bucket that I'm seeing is application of AI and predictive analytics, where you can start to integrate automation in, for example, a chatbot that asks the right questions, mm -hmm. and that may take various forms and routes to lead the conversation, but the output for each conversation is the same. So here you start integrating artificial intelligence and automation to essentially really put your HR on steroids. I think there's also applications in workflows where you can start leveraging artificial intelligence in your workflow automations. And there's also applications of predictive analytics, you know, if ChatGPT, for example, or a generative AI gives you a certain input, you can hit the button and it automatically sends out the email to that person. So you integrate automation with artificial intelligence, I think potentially creating a very powerful tool in the arsenal of the HR professional. And then the final big bucket that I'm seeing of automation applications is really in the compliance and reporting corner, where we still see a lot of HR professionals trying to create dashboards manually, where a lot of that can be automated, where you just aggregate all the different data into a single dashboard. That is essentially work that you can easily automate. It's also about, you know, keeping track of updates of labor laws, for example. You can just scan the internet and get those updates updates in your inbox, you know, as they, as they develop. And I think a final example is kind of these old RSS feeds that you used to have, you know, that collect different news articles. We can do that in, an, in a fully automated and also much smarter way these days where you get updates on, you know, changes in labor laws in the different countries that you operate in that can be filtered and that can be sent automatically into your inbox so that you are always up to date with the newest and the latest. Dieter, that's a lot of different applications for HR when it comes to automation. 
Definitely, Eric. And I think there's so much more opportunity on the horizon as well. You know, I think as HR professionals, we are getting a lot more proficient in terms of spotting where potential automation opportunities actually find themselves. And on those last two that you mentioned, you know, we worked with an organization a while ago that shared with us definitely in the reporting space to push out people data to managers. They've automated that process, saves a lot of time but also increases the level of conversation that the business partner is able to have with the business because it's no longer about where did this data come from, it's actually a conversation about in our report, these are the insights that we had gathered as part of that. And your last point there, I think there's also some real value and I'm just going to, and I don't know whether this is the right term for it or not, I'm going to call it about time stamping certain compliance queries where there are certain things that we do have to look at. And I'm thinking here, especially with the fact that we're facing a lot more complexity in terms of things like employment contracts and gig workers and temporary assignments. How do we keep track of that? And I think automation is a really great place to be proactive to say, you know, person XYZ's contract is expiring in two, three, four weeks time. There's an action that needs to be taken by you know, the manager. And Usually we thought these things were easy, but what happens when literally every day or every week there's some inconsistencies in terms of when people started and when they need to be renewed. So I think some great applications. I think we should embrace it as HR as well. And there's a real opportunity here if we are able to do the work to say, but how is this going to benefit me in my role? I love that example, Dieter. And I think this showcases just the enormous impact that automation can have on our lives as HR professionals and also how much easier it can potentially make our lives. So automation in HR, it is hot, it is happening. HR is changing fast. And I think it's a topic that we should keep a finger on the pulse on. But if you really want to implement this in your own organization, start thinking about it. Keep a list of potential processes that you can automate. And if you're looking for more inspiration, I can also recommend you the Academy to Innovate HR. Specifically, we have a program called the Digital HR Certificate Program, where we really dive into this subject matter and look at how can you leverage digital to deliver even better HR services. And automation is a key, key part of that. I also want to just share maybe a sneak peek of what they will find in the program area, because I think there's a real realization that people also need to understand that automation is not necessarily about the big things that happens at the organizational level. I think for an HR professional, you have to ask the question, in my own scope of influence and control, what is the workflow that I can actually automate that's going to make my job easier, that's going to allow me to focus on something else? So for me, automation and the real value and benefit lies a lot more in the incremental changes that you need to make over time, as opposed to that big silver bullet changes that we sometimes expect from large-scale technology operations. But we dive into that a little bit more in the course as well. It's never a silver bullet, it's always a hundred silver needles. With that being said, I wanna wrap this up. If you found this video interesting, uh, make sure to like this video, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. With that being said, I just wanna wish you a very good day. Mm -hmm.